Okay, in this tutorial I want to talk a little bit about adding some more content to your page or to your site and this is uh, content and function that comes from somewhere else. Um, a lot of different names for these. They, some people call them widgets, web widgets, uh, add-ins, counters, statistics, those kind of things. Uh, but there's just three I want to I want to show you. I want to show you a way to gather statistics uh, about your traffic, your visitors, um, or add a counter. Those are kind of interchangeable things. Um, also add a thing called a cluster map, which is just purely for fun. It's a way to see where your visitors are coming from on a map, have it plotted for you. And also uh, then add a little an actual web widget in the weather bug one that will show the weather forecast or the current conditions in your area just to add some content just so you can see how to do it and then I'll show you some resources where you can go find all sorts of web widgets out there that you can add to your own. Okay so I've uh, I've started off here I've got Dreamweaver running and I have my index up uh, I guess I don't need that up right now but um, let me just switch the first thing I want to do is uh, just give you one example of a way to add content or I should say to gather statistics uh, about your visitors. And uh, one of the commonly used tools to do that is this one that I have pulled up now called SiteMeter. So SiteMeter is a free service. Uh, I've used it for on quite a few projects. And uh, it gives you, uh, let me just show you an example of the kind of statistics it gives you. So here's a, an older uh, website that still has this little SiteMeter on it, still gathering statistics. Um, but you see, you can get a summary of your traffic. If you want more detailed information, like let me pull up the previous 30 days, it gives me a nice graph of my the, the number of visitors, and that's the what you see in yellow there, and then the orange is the number of page views, so I can get an idea of how many pages each visitors each vis visitors how many pages each visitor is looking at. Um, you can see there's a little spike there on the first, second, and third. Not really sure why, but I can look a little closer at that. So I can get a general idea of my traffic here for free. Um, I can look at, the, there's a lot more information here. Like, let me just go at the bottom here. If I was wondering uh, what size monitors my visitors were using, I can pull it up and I can see exactly there the monitor size that my visitor was using. Uh, still a pretty good. Uh, section of my visitors, 37% uh, are at 1,024, but I've got a pretty gr big group here, 30% 30 30 at 1,280, and even a bigger percent at 1,280 by 1,024, so that's a widescreen. Um, I'm getting some widescreens in coming in, and a lot of others, so just kind of interesting information to, sh to, to, to notice. I can look at the operating system, what operating system my visitors are using. I'm sure it's still majority Windows, yep, Windows XP a few Windows Vista sneaking in there and a few Macs. Uh, I might also want to see um, what web browser my visitors are using. Uh, again, this is probably uh, more useful information uh, to really see what, what I need to make sure my website works in which browser. So let's see how I can add one of these things to my site. A little stat counter, um, and I'm just going to use SiteMeter here. So you can see they've got a free version. I'm going to click on sign up. I've already got it partially filled out, so I just put in my URL of this website. So uh, if you're in the class and you're just doing this one for practice, you probably don't want to set this up in until you have your website on its the place where it's going to have its permanent home. So you put the right URL in. Um, but I'm just going to go through here. You can see I've put in the URL of this website, given it a site name. It let me put a little code name for myself. It set the time. I agree. I'm going to go to next. A few more things I've got to put in here. So let me just put an email address in quick. All right. No, I don't think I need a title. How about other? My zip code. That's good. No, no, no. Okay. Oops. Needs to. Okay. All right. Let's see if that'll work now. Okay. All right. So I've got this little account created. 
and I am ready to go and um, start gathering up my statistics here. All right, so there is um, what it's gathering so far, but I need to get it on my page. Okay, that's it's not really keeping track yet. So I'm going to go here to my manager, and um, I got to decide which type of uh, statistics I'd like to gather. Okay, so I'm in the manager. I can go down here, and I can choose the meter style. All right, so. Um, I've got to have either the little logo showing on my website. If I want a counter, I can choose one of these kind. So I'm just going to select that one right there with the counter um, and their logo. Select that one. All right. Okay, now I'm going to go over here to the left and get the HTML code. Takes a sec to pull that up. Okay, and it gives me some instructions here, uh, but really all I need is this little bit of code down here. So I'm just going to click in there, and I might do a Control A to select everything or an Apple A. I'm going to get all that copied. So I'm copying all that code in there, and then I need to take that back to Dreamweaver. So that little bit of code, um, and then I'm going to take it right back to Dreamweaver. And there's some good instructions here uh, if you need the instructions. Okay, so I'm back in Dreamweaver. Now I want this to run on all my pages, so I'm going to open up the template. And I want this to show up right at the bottom of my page, maybe, um, you know, way down at the very bottom here. So I'm going to click way down at the bottom here. Now I can't paste that here in the design view. I just get my cursor where I want it to go, and I have to change to the code view. And I can see my cursor is right there above the last table tag, so I'm going to create some space. I can't put it at the very bottom because then it would be after the closing HTML. I need it right before the closing body or anywhere else on the page will work also. But this is the, the furthest down place I can put it. So you can see it just added that little bit of code in. Okay, That is enough. When I go back to the design view, I see a little preview down there of what it might look like. And with that, I'm going to do File Save. My template will send that out to all my pages. And now I have the little site meter and a counter on all my pages. Now, I, I might not really choose to put it there. I might find it in a little nicer place, but at least I can get it on all of my pages. And once I upload this to the web server, that will start keeping track. That counter will, will start working. And anytime I need to, I can log back into my site meter account and uh, see the see the more detailed statistics that that little guy is is uh, recording and keeping track of. So one way to get a counter or a statistics device onto your onto your website is using site meter. So pretty easy to use. Um, and that is it for gathering statistics. Now there's a couple other ones out there that are commonly used. Site Meter is a really good one. There's another one called Stat Counter. So stat, statcounter.com. And then uh, if you have a Google account, Google has a tool called Google Analytics, which also allows you to do this kind of stuff. Um, I think if you have a Google account, that Google Analytics Analytics is uh, does all the same things Site Meter does and maybe even does a little bit better job. Um, so you decide which one you want to use. Stat, stat counter is, I mean, site meter is just fine. Okay, another thing you might want on your website is this thing called a cluster map. So let me give you an example of what a cluster map looks like. So here's a little blog that I do a little work on. Um, I wanted to sort of get an idea of who was using the site, not only how many people, but where they were coming from. And this little free thing called a cluster map does that for me. So I'm going to scroll all the way down the page here. I put it way at the bottom. So you see this little this little map that shows up down here saying visitor locations, cluster map. So you know, all these little red dots on the map. So if I click on that, I get to see a big version. So again, it's keeping track of my visitors, um, but it's kind of keeping track of them more, uh, more by where they are located. So it's just kind of fun to see. Um, nothing that big of a deal here but just kind of a, a fun visual thing to say, hey, look, somebody you know, came to my site from 
you know, Japan or, you know, from the middle of Africa. And the bigger the dot, obviously, more traffic. So here's how you put one of those on your website. Okay, so I just, I'm at clustermaps.com. Again, you wouldn't do this until your website was at its permanent um, hosting location. So uh, let me just put this in here quick. My URL for this practice website. Let's see. Okay, and then all I have to do is say make my map. Again, it's going to generate some HTML. So you can see uh, some choices here. I'm just going to choose the recommended one, come down into this little bit of code, select all of it, and copy all of it. So I'm just using the keyboard shortcuts. Select all was Control A or Apple A. Copy was um, Control C or Apple C. So I got a copy of that. I'm going to go back to Dreamweaver now. Um, I don't want this cluster map on all of my, I mean, yeah, I don't want this cluster map on all of my pages. I just want it to show up on maybe my index page, my very first page. So I'm going to come in and uh, maybe I want it over here on this left side where I have this um, placeholder text. So I'm going to highlight that text. And again, I copied HTML code. So I have to go into the HTML code to paste it. So I had that text highlighted, and that lets me find where that spot is. So you can just highlight that, and I'm going to paste it here. So Apple V or Control V, that code goes in. Let's go back to Design View, and I can see the map starting to show up. But it's really not going to start working until I've saved my changes and uploaded it to the web server. But let me just preview the browser so I can get an idea of what it looks like. So there it is sitting on my page. And as soon as this is actually on the web server, it will start keeping track of my visitors, not only where they are, where they are, um, but also how many. You can see Site Meter has started to work down here. It already knows that I have one visitor, um, or I've had one visitor, which was me. OK, so those are two things you can add to your page. So a counter and a cluster map. Let's add um, the last thing. Uh, let's add a little uh, web widget or a weather device. So if you want to see all sorts of web widgets you can use on your website, um, just go to Google, type in web widgets. You'll get uh, lots of hits here, some big catalogs of them, widget box. You can see all sorts of different kinds of widgets you can put on your website. Um, I just want a little weather one, so I'm going to, and I know the name of it, it's called the weather bug. I know at least one of you has already <laughs> added this little thing to your website, so I just did a Google search for weather bug. Uh, I'm going to go right to it there, oh. and you can see one of the things we've got over here is uh, just your weather just got better. There's a web widget, and I'm going to go right into that. And it says, all right, well, what kind do you want? So I've got a bunch of options here of what kind of um, weather bug that I want on my website. Um, all right, so you see uh, those choices there. I'm just going to choose maybe uh, this little one like that. So I've got it selected. And then I, again, have to fill out some information here. Um, needs to know kind of where I'm located. Uh, that'll be good. Salt Lake City, Clark Planetarium is the closest place. And I agree and get the code. So it's going to be a code thing again. Um, so there's a little snippet of uh, HTML. I'm going to go inside of there, Control A or Apple A to get it all selected. Control C or Apple C to get all that selected, or to get all that copied. Take that back to Dreamweaver. Okay, and I decide which page I want it to show up on. Maybe I want it to show up right over here um, underneath or maybe above uh, my little cluster map. So I could even select right on that. And when I go to code view, that stuff will all be highlighted. So I've got to find the beginning of what's already there and give myself a couple of spaces right inside of there. I'm just going to paste Apple V or Control V go back to design view and I can see that some weather bug stuff is showing up but it really doesn't show until it gets previewed in the browser and if you see now I've got this little weather bug um, 
now it got information. It's cold right now in Salt Lake uh, this morning, and I've got two little bits of content coming from other places, things that I'm not going to have to update. They just happen automatically. Um, so you can play with those, but um, you can see that there are lots of, let me just go back here to, uh, to where I was at Google, when I'd, and when I'd search for web widgets, you can see there's all sorts of different kinds of web widgets out there that uh, might be kind of fun to play with, to add different kinds of things uh, to your website. Alright, now I've got uh, one more tutorial I want to do on adding a form to your website, how to gather information back from your visitor, and we'll do that in the next tutorial.